I think one of the most powerful moments um, during the lockdown was, I mean, it was all very scary. I completely agree. And I think I was, I, I would wake up and like feel so anxious. I was like trying to meditate and like really like not being able to like, you know, stop my mind of like worrying. Uh, but one of the most, most powerful things for me was when one day I went cycling to central London and, you know, you go to Oxford Street, which is normally like full of like people buying, 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 buying. And it was, there was no one. It was empty. It was just, it was basically desert town. And I found that so powerful and like, okay, there is actually a way to reset all this mindset of like consuming and, and buying. As you said, I also like that, that if we use art to go away from that, people will probably appreciate it more than this kind of empty way of consuming at the same time though um in the summer when things started opening up again i remember i went to the vna and when i was coming back cycling through region um oxford street again and it was there were thousands of people on the street again all trying to buy stuff and i felt a bit sad because i thought okay but we had an opportunity to kind of reset and when things start opening up again people actually want to go and shop again and how do we maintain these like how do how how can we help um you know keep that state of like okay we don't need to consume as much i mean of course if we've been deprived from consuming maybe the reaction will be like okay i want to consume again but how do we do that transition in a way or we, we can help that transition in a way that is less abrupt and is more like smooth and we don't get to the levels we were before is there a word of art there as well oh no a uh, big time creativity i was talking uh, about this fairly recently and also it's like any of these things right you can't change your entire life overnight you know what it's like when you wake up and go right today i'm going on a diet i'm going to go to the gym i'm going to eat really well i'm not going to watch tv and by the evening you haven't done any of those things because you've overwhelmed yourself it's you too much meanwhile <laughs> <laughs> right you can't you can't change everything overnight I've, I've experienced that as well um but and also, I don't know whether people were really consuming because I know that I was desperate to go out and look at a couple of exhibitions. I wasn't desperate to go shopping, but I was desperate to go and see some new things. But one of the things I have become quite interested in recently, and I'm going to be talking to a, a company that deals in the neuroscience of all of this soon, is the chemicals that we release when we're making, creating, and when we're consuming, for example, or when we're in nature. And I've suddenly become very interested in this. So um, I'm a bit of an ideas junkie. I always say to my students, I want you to be junkies as well. And they go, what do you mean? With ideas, with ideas. Because you know what it's like every time um, you come up with something or you're incubating or whatever, you get big, you know, big high to the brain and then you go off and you have a go. As I said before, it's the similar thing that you get from consuming. Endorphins, you get um, these one from exercising, but you also get them from massive laughs. You know, serotonin. So these feel-good things that we get from other things are things that we can get from nature. We can get them from interacting together, and we can get them from being creative. And one of the real joys over COVID, and this this really surprised me, is I went back to some of um, my older work. There was I remember Alexander McQueen they were doing a thing where every week they would post up a picture of one of their beautiful dresses and then they would invite people on instagram to recreate it as a painting or as a piece of craft or whatever and i remember doing one and the response to it was quite phenomenal because it was it was a watercolor i'd done a watercolor which i hadn't done for a long time and people were messaging me going what brushes do you use what paint do you use what and all of a sudden i had people that i'd never spoken to before who were starting to play again they were starting to play and and saying i'm oh god i'm really enjoying this i haven't done this since i was a kid and i haven't and so they were starting to occupy time i had families that were doing activities with their children so of course it was helping relationships which were quite fraught because everyone's on top of one another but if you could come out with something like that and think hey i've, I've kind of got a new skill i've been creating new things and i've been given permission 
to go and do something that I didn't think I was allowed to do anymore. So I don't, I really don't think it's a matter of saying to people, you need to consume less. I think it's about finding ways of reproducing, replacing the ways that you feel like a good human being with something else. Because let's face it, if you punish people, they're not gonna, they're not gonna want to do it. But if you give them something even better, so I'm still thinking about this, Shazeb. This is all kind of stuff that's kind of going around in my mind because I'm also working on a, on, a, on a series of 2D works, which I'm calling Blueprints for the Future, and they're based on cyanotype, which was an 18th century way of using chemicals and, and, you know, and the sun. So it's very eco-friendly, it's very sustainable, and I am wanting to produce this kind of blueprint for the future. And some of it will involve the, you know, could we, is there a sort of brain computer interface? Not, not sort of um, just something that you would put on, something that would help you. So, yeah, I think it's much more fundamental. I think it's how do we replace that feeling? And then as a knock-on effect, you will find that people will behave better. They will have better habits. I think that's how it works okay. for me. <laughs> um. No, I agree. I think it's an interesting perspective and an and interesting way of, and I think very hopeful way of looking at it as well. Like how do we replace or how do we draw attention to something that is actually better for yes. individuals, but also for uh, the climate and, and, and for uh, the world and for planet Earth in general. 